Little Caesars premium Detroit-style deep, deep dish pizza with more cheese and pepperoni is our most premium pizza experience. And now it's even more premium. Just call 1-855-TALK-DEEP and we'll compliment you while you eat it. This premium treatment isn't just for eccentric billionaires. It's for you with your shiny hair and very kind eyes. That one's on us. Pick up our premium deep, deep dish pizza for just 8 bucks and call 1-855-TALK-DEEP. Hot and ready 4 to 8. Or order anytime, you cool rebel. Only at Little Caesars. Pizza, pizza. At participating locations plus tax. Blog Talk Radio. My name is Ronald Reagan. This station daily pierces the Iron Curtain with the truth, answering the lies of the Kremlin and bringing a message of hope to millions trapped behind the Iron Curtain. Grateful letters from listeners smuggled past the secret police. Express thanks for identifying communist quizlings and informers by name. You are listening to the Brian Craig Show podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Barack Obama ain't taking my shotgun. I got two. If he tries to fool with my Beretta, he's got a problem. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. A zombie has no will of his own. You see them sometimes, walking around blindly with dead eyes, following orders, not knowing what they do, not caring. You mean like Democrats? You can follow Brian on Twitter and Facebook and listen to archived shows at briancraigshow.com. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. I suggest we use it. You can follow Brian on Twitter and Facebook and listen to archived shows at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian Craig. All right, and welcome to another edition of the Brian Craig Show podcast. I'm always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. You can listen to The Brian Craig Show all over the place. Go to briancraigshow.com, and all the places that air this podcast are listed there. But if you go to iTunes, you can listen to this episode later today. It'll be up there. And all of our past episodes, about 400 of them on iTunes. We're in other places, too. Tune in Radio, the Stitcher Radio app, and elsewhere. But I always try to direct people to iTunes. Just go to uh, iTunes or Stitcher Radio or the Tune in Radio app. And search for The Brian Craig Show, and we'll come right up. And we also stream live video on Periscope, download Periscope, and find us at Brian Craig Show. And you can also see me on the radio on the Steve Kane Show in the mornings on Periscope as well. And when you go to briancraigshow.com, follow us on Twitter and Facebook as well. All right, well, uh, Kathy and I are still a little under the weather. I'm much better than Kathy. I'm about 98% well. I just can't stop coughing and hacking. And uh, Kathy, she's uh, she's down the tubes of sickness, but uh, the show must go on. And uh, we're I'm a couple talk about days a lot behind you. I'm a couple days behind yeah. you. Yeah, I've been sleeping on the couch for two weeks yes. now. And, yes. Uh, the the other night, I told Kathy, I've been, on, I, you know, because we're in separate rooms at night, because I don't want to be around. You know, we, we were passing this illness back and forth. I'm trying not to catch it again. And uh, I was like getting lonely. I said, Kathy, I mean, I mean, I, I said, what if I come in our room and sleep on the floor because you know I have no one to talk to. I've been watching, <laughs> uh, I've been watching Star Trek: The Next Generation on the on the couch every night, and uh, the first season of it, which isn't that bad. Well, we're going to talk about a lot of things on this podcast. We're, we're going to start off talking about unindicted rapist President Bill Clinton and his accessory to his sex crimes. Hillary Clinton, who's running for president of the United States. And i got to play this clip for you. Joy Behar is back on The View. Uh, I don't watch The View, but sometimes oh. things happen on The View, and they make their way you know, on the Internet, and people learn about them. Uh, listen to this. This is uh, you know, Joy Behar, so typical of a, of a you know, okay, oh my gosh, Kathy, coughing up blood in it. You know, Joy Behar is your stereotypical – New York liberal woman, and uh, yeah. I'm not going to set this obnoxious up. as hell. Um, yeah, I'm just going to play it for you, and uh, then we'll talk about it after the fact. So, so the ladies of the View are up there. There was a lot to play, but I'm only going to play this one clip. Raymond Simone, who starred on that rapist television show, The Cosby Show, uh, wasn't Raymond Simone on the on that show? Rapist Raymond Little Cosby, Simone, yes. Yeah, Raven Simone. Yeah, did Raven I say Rapist Simone? Yeah. Oh no, Rapist no, Simone. Raven Raven Simone during this conversation. Right. I'm not going to play this part for you, but she was applauding Hillary Clinton for staying by her husband through his pregnancy. She she meant to say phil- philandering, and she said pregnancy. I mean, she said she, she is a total moron. She is really stupid. 
yeah, David. So She's Joy really Behar, dumb. Though, I'm going to play this part with, with Joy Behar, your stereotypical New York liberal woman. Uh, and uh, she stands by Bill Clinton and also another Democrat. Listen to this. Find ways to bring her down. Poli- people have to understand this policy. Uh, a Teddy Kennedy. Remember Chappaquiddick? Am I the oldest oldest person in no, the world? No, I remember okay. that. Chappaquiddick. <laughs> I mean, a girl drowned and he abandons her and he drowned. P- women still voted for Teddy Kennedy. Why? True. Because he voted for women's rights. That's why. That's the bottom oh, line of Lord. it, in my opinion. I mean, that I is like disgusting. Either one to Wait. The truth. Teddy or Bill. But they're both dogs, as far as I'm concerned. But I still will vote for Bill Clinton because yeah. he votes in my favor. Well, I wasn't aware that I, I now again I I don't know. It, it's been a while. See, that's how I, a lot of people they see if they they see if they yeah. get her they get him. Yeah. That's you how know, they I, see um, it. That he's back in the White House. Well, you know, I I haven't been in high school social studies class for a long time, but I was under the impression that uh, Bill Clinton served two terms as president, and the United States Constitution means he can't serve another. So I thought Hillary yes. was running on Bill, but somehow, yeah, Joy Behar believes. So here's That's that, usually how it works. This. Joy Behar, this is basically what she said. Um, Teddy Kennedy killed a woman. You know, Ted, Teddy Kennedy drove off that bridge at Chappaquiddick and, and, and left her there to die in, in, under the water in his car, he drug his own fat ass out. I don't know if he was fat then, but he drug his fat ass out, walked back to the cabin and got together with his jaily buddies and and uh, strategized on how they were going to save him while she w- might have been still alive, suffocating, breathing the last breath of air in that air pocket. So Joy Behar says, Teddy Kennedy killed a woman. Bill Clinton's raped women, but I still vote for them both. Because they support women's rights. Are you freaking kidding me? And the oh yeah, the ladies of the view. Yeah, you know. Are you freaking kidding me? You know, if if you're raping women, if if you're killing women, you are not a supporter of women's rights, Joy Behar. I mean, my God, D- does that make sense to liberals when they say this crap? Yeah, that, that's Brian. You are seeing, you are seeing liberal logic. That's what liberal is logic, right there in yeah. front of you. That is the liberal logic. They don't care how big of a pig you are or what kind of a person you are. It's oh, like yeah. the, it's like with Cosby. Who cares if Absolutely. he's raped 45, 50 women? He's still funny. He's oh, still yeah. talented. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. who cares if O.J. killed Ron and Nicole? He's still a great yeah. football player. He's still a great American hero. I mean, that is – you're dealing with people that have no moral compass. They're godless, moralist people, so – Something so yeah. a rapist or somebody like that who abuses women their whole life, that's no big deal as long as they're pro choice. That's all that matters to way, her. Like Joy way, Behar's Bill, even going to get pregnant here. Bill, Bill Clinton, you know, uh, I am unaware. I remember the Clinton years. What legislation did he sign into law that benefited women? You know, I mean, you know, he appointed a couple of lesbians to uh, for the attorney general. First one didn't make it, and then Janet Reno. I mean, he did. I, he appointed a couple of lesbians thing there to the attorney generalship, but I, I don't recall him doing anything to uh, benefit women. But Joy Behar, yeah, Ted Kennedy kills women. Bill Clinton rapes women, but I still vote for him because they support women's rights. That is so freaking insane. You know, I mean, I can't believe it's like that old joke about Mussolini made the trains run on time. Yeah, he was a fascist, but the trains ran on time, so I support him. You know, they 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 couldn't vote. You know, it's fascism. But I mean, that's that's the kind of thinking, and and you know, the liberal, you know, Michael Savage says liberalism is a mental disorder, and that is certainly the case. It's much more than that. I'm not a psychologist, or you know, but I so I can't diagnose. But uh, definitely, Joy Behar is mentally ill. All right, now listen to this one. This next well, what I'd like to ask, yeah. what I'd like to ask Joy Behar, is would you feel yeah. the same way if Bill Clinton raped your daughter? Oh yeah, he supports women's rights. Would you yeah. feel the same way? She probably would, knowing her. Yeah, absolutely. Now they just blindly um, follow these guys. Blindly follow them. Now, they don't care. Now M- M- Melissa Harris Perry. That this is back on the Clinton Institute. Melissa Harris Perry, another who's a black militant. Oh, yeah. Melissa Harris Perry is the black militant racist that's on the weekends on MSNBC. And and Melissa Harris Perry 
Uh, I always got to tell this to people because she never does. She uh, knows Obama personally. They were both on the faculty at the University of Chicago together, and she never mentions that. She never talks about it or anything, which I find very suspicious. Uh, so Melissa Harris Perry, she's talking about Donald Trump calling out uh, Hillary uh, about Bill Clinton's sex crimes. And, and listen to what Melissa Harris Perry says. This is some crazy stuff. Trump warns that if Hillary Clinton continues to deploy Bill Clinton on the campaign trail, she should be prepared for attacks involving her husband's sexual history. And it's a history that includes Bill Clinton's first deny but finally admitted affair with Monica Lewinsky, Bill Clinton's alleged non-consensual sexual contact with several other women. Okay, I'll play the rest in a minute. This, this part here I got to stop down. She says Bill Clinton's non-consensual sexual contact with women. Um, that's called rape. Uh, when when Melissa Harris Perry and MSNBC are talking about Bill Cosby raping this lesbian basketball chick from Tulane, they don't say um, Bill Cosby is being charged with um, unwanted sexual contact. They say he's a rapist. So what Melissa Harris Perry says, unwanted sexual contact with a woman is a rape. In fact, it's violent rape. So look, notice the language that she – but it's Bill Clinton. And he's a Democrat, and his wife is going to be the nominee. So let's not call it rape. It's it's uh, it's non consensual sexual contact. What term I mean, do you think she would use if uh, if it was Trump? Rape, just like Bill Cosby. Rape, rape. No doubt. Yeah, okay, back to Melissa Harris. Perry. Includes Bill Clinton's first deny, but finally admitted affair with Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> Bill Clinton's alleged non-consensual sexual contact with several other women, no. as well as at least three women who have. I'm sorry, at least three women who have accused Bill Clinton of unwanted sexual encounters. Okay, so three women that she knows of have accused Bill Clinton of unwanted sexual encounters. This is another liberal phrase. This is that's also it's called rape. The definition of rape is, and it's a it's a mild definition, but it, that could be a definition of rape, unwanted sexual contact. But I, since when do they give the definition of words? They don't want to say the word when it involves Bill Clinton. It's like the N word. I'll tell you the rest of this. Sorry, at least three women who have accused Bill Clinton of unwanted sexual oh, encounters. Man. But it's also a history that does not, at any point, as far as I can tell, include Hillary Clinton being involved in any of those accusations other than being married to the man who was accused, which raises the question of the extent to which Hillary Clinton's political future should be determined by Bill Clinton's scandal-plagued past. What do you think? Well, I think she should. Now, here, here's the thing. Um, I am not saying that if a guy goes out and rapes a woman that his wife – has any responsibility in a rape. But Hillary Rodham Clinton knew about all of these incidents with her husband and continued to defend him and go out and character assassinate the the, the victims of his what did she say Un, his uh, the victims of his unwanted sexual contact attack. The you know they they are unwanted sexual contact victims, not rape victims according to Mothers Perry. So the fact that she covered up for him, made excuses for him, stood by him after sex crime after sex crime, discredited the women publicly, makes her a party to it, who in fact in many ways allowed Bill Clinton to carry on with his unwanted sexual contact. Uh, okay, so that makes her an accessory. So uh, she is very much involved. And and you know Kathy and I have been married for 19 years, and I'm of the opinion. That wives know everything their husbands do, even if the husbands don't think they do. And and uh, for a woman to stand by a man who uh, and give interviews and pretend to be dancing on beaches and holding hands and blah blah blah, she's a party to it. So uh, she is very much responsible. In my opinion, I mean, you know, that's just my opinion. Now we're, we're going to take a break, and when we get back, uh, unindicted rapist Bill Clinton was asked by a female reporter about his past. Okay, we'll share that with you and talk about that coming up. You okay, Kathy? I don't hear any calls. I'm okay. Okay. All right, we'll, we'll take a break. I'm Brian. You're listening to the Brian Craig Show podcast. I'm always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. And uh, follow us on Periscope and Twitter, both at Brian Craig Show. And on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Brian Craig Show. 
and our website, BrianCraigShow.com. All right, we'll take a break and be right back after this. You're a podcast listener. How do I know that? Because you are listening to this podcast right now. I'm a podcast listener too. And when I find a cool and interesting podcast, I have to share it with you. And you must check out The Laugh Podcast. L-A-F. The Laugh Podcast is a weekly show hosted by Ryan Bull, a.k.a. Mr. Two Frames, and Richard Lusk, a.k.a. L-Train. Together they bring their expertise and humor to discuss everything in the world of film. The Laugh Podcast is a discussion and debate on the merits of current films as well as the classics including film reviews and their weekend edition previews new releases and covers what's streaming this week on Amazon Prime and Netflix you will be entertained you will learn and have a great time when you listen to The Laugh Podcast you can find them on the show's website thelaughpodcast.com L-A-F or on iTunes Stitcher or any of the podcast apps so do what I do listen to The Laugh Podcast Are you into photo sharing? Of course you are. Everyone is these days. I want to tell you about the newest, best, and coolest photo sharing app out there, the PicMe app, P-I-C-C-M-E-E. With PicMe, you can share your pictures in tons of different categories. And get this, you can win free prizes for posting your pictures. That's right, free prizes like flat screen TVs, tablets, gift cards, smartphones, hoverboards, and many more. All you have to do is share your pictures and receive the most votes. That's it. You can even be randomly picked to win those free prizes. Pick Me is partnered with rapper Fat Joe. Some Pick Me winners will meet Fat Joe and his celebrity friends because they will be dropping off those incredible prizes personally. So what are you waiting for? Download Pick Me right now, free, in the Google Play Store and Apple App Store and start photo sharing and winning those prizes. Pick Me, P-I-C-C-M-E-E, in the Google Play and Apple App Store. If you're in business, you need a website. If you don't have a website, you're not in business. In fact, your website is the lifeblood of your business. Not only is it the first impression you make with potential clients, it's also how your current customers view you. MyLaunchKits.com understands this and offers web hosting services that are fast, secure, and managed by dedicated professionals. MyLaunchKits.com is your launchpad for success and handles everything you will need for your company's website. From web hosting and design, designing your e-commerce site, search engine optimization, web hosting for Linux, WordPress, and Windows, and much more. When you're a client of MyLaunchKits.com, you will have a free domain name, fast, reliable servers with a 99.9% uptime guarantee, 24-7 customer support with our experts who are available to assist you the moment you need them. And our services are priced to fit any company's budget. Boost your business potential with MyLaunchKits.com or call 800-264-3269. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. You can follow Brian on Twitter and Facebook and listen to archived shows at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian Craig. All right, we are back. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast and streaming live video on Periscope at Brian Craig Show. You know, these. Um, I, you know, I, I'm of the opinion – well, I read this article the other day, Kathy. It says 20% of the American population were not alive during the Lewinsky scandal. So that means – and I know a lot of them aren't old enough to vote because that includes babies. Right. But but there's an entire generation of adults in their 20s or 30s who were too young to be following that because right. back 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 during the Clinton presidency, you know, when you would see Paula Jones would come on TV, Monica Lewinsky, if you had kids in the room, you would turn the station off the news because – if if any time the news came on and they were talking about the president of the United States, Bill Clinton, parents turned the station because what was being talked about was so sexually graphic, they didn't want their kids to hear. So there's a lot of adults in their 20s and 30s who really don't know. They, they think Bill Clinton was like a womanizer. He liked to screw around. They don't know that he was out there raping. Or what did Melissa Harris Perry say? He was out there uh, giving women unwanted sexual contact. And they're learning the details of this for the very, very first time. And uh, I, I think it's coming as a shock to a lot of people. And, uh, and Brian, Billy, all of this yeah. 
all of this is because had the guts to say something. That's right. That's Trump the whole it. catalyst to this whole discussion right. was he made a tweet saying, That's I right. mean, he is totally driving the news. He made a tweet that said mm-hmm. Hillary basically was a warning shot. Hillary better watch yeah. out if she, she does not want to go there. If she's going to tell me I don't respect women, let's talk about mm-hmm. her husband. It was like one or two sentences and it's been yeah. like two weeks and it's also brought all this news back uh, onto the internet. I told you there was somebody that I'm Facebook friends with that's younger, and she wrote on her Facebook page, she said, I had no idea so many women yeah. accused Bill Clinton of rape, and she said, that makes me really sick. So even though jo- Joy Behar might be voting for Clinton, believe me, there's a lot of women who will not because of him, who will not vote for Hillary because of that, because they're like, you know what, I'm sick of the Clintons. I'm sick of this you know, guy, he's a womanizing pig, and I don't want know, him in the office. I don't think or women there. today... I don't think women today, even Democrat women, respect a woman who stands by a man who's screwing around on her. That, that, that's like the days of Mad Men. I kind of think those days I would of think the, you, know, the good you never know. Well, Joy right. Behar respects it. Yeah, Joy Behar's a pig. I mean, she's just a pig. She's I mean, a pig. Yeah, to, talk, to talk to talk that way, she's a she's a complete pig. So yet yesterday, um, unindicted rapist Bill Clinton. I didn't come up with that unindicted rapist. Another radio talk show was on CNN and said it. And I kind of picked. I lie. I think it's pretty good. It's accurate, isn't it? Um, unindicted rapist Bill Clinton. He was giving a speech yesterday for Hillary, and behind him there were these young girls in their twenties wearing "Ready for Hillary" T-shirts, and they were making these faces of disgust behind Bill Clinton's back as he was speaking. Did you see any of those? That of that, Kathy, it was unbelievable. And Bill Clinton couldn't see it because they were behind him on the stage. And it really, I mean, I it was that. humiliating. Yeah, Hillary it was humiliating. Needs to, Hillary needs, I don't know why she thinks he's helping her, but he's not. He didn't help her beat Obama. And he is not, especially with all the stuff coming out, he is only yeah. disgusting. He's only making women disgusted. And he. And it also oh, makes Hillary look like she can't win without him. She needs to make him leave. Yeah. He's not an asset. He's He's not. He's a detriment to her. Well, he's got the whole Truly. dialogue is about all this uh, sex stuff, uh, you know, and uh, uh, someone he's in the so chat said – so oblivious. He is so oblivious uh, to it all. Someone in the chat said they shouldn't have been wearing the Hillary shirts. I, I think that they wore the Hillary shirts to make sure they got on stage. I, I think it was a pretty kind yes. thing that they that they did. Now, so so these women are making these – look this up online, these pictures. It's unbelievable. Uh, I, this has never happened to Bill Cl- See, Bill Clinton to these you – know, uh, what I've learned about people that are old, you know, like, you know, Bill Clinton's 69 years old. And, you know, when people get to be about 70, a lot of times they don't realize it. They still think they're cool and hip, you know. And and to uh, people in their 30s and 40s, the Clintons to them are like Richard Nixon to me or you. I remember President right. Nixon. You know, I, I mean, I don't remember when he was president. I was, you know, I was born in 71. Kathy was born in 70. But I remember when he would run around for, you know, and give interviews and all that stuff. But, it, you know, he was like some old guy, you know, to me. He didn't mean anything. I, I, he was, you know, I had no connection to him. He wasn't around. And, and Bill and Hillary Clinton, she doesn't realize she's an old hag, and he doesn't realize he's an old man. They still think they're cool and hip with the youngsters. The days of Bill Clinton having huh. town hall meetings – on on MTV and asking if he wears boxers or briefs, those right. days are over. So yes. so Bill Clinton. He looks really old face. too. Oh yeah, he does with his bony fingers and his skeleton. Yeah, he looks he really old. It's stage. like somebody let the air out of his out of his face or something. He's all skin and bones. Oh yeah, absolutely. So he gets off the stage where these women were protesting behind him with the faces, and this local television reporter, who's some young girl in her twenties. She she has no – you know, to her, Bill Clinton's just some old man who was president when she was, you know, in elementary school. A dirty old man. And, He's a dirty old – see, yeah. Brian, you have to understand, when all this stuff came out before, Bill Clinton was, like, younger. He was in his 50s. Now they see like a dirty old man. Yeah. And yeah, he now president. he's just a dirty old so, man. So this young girl reporter at some local station goes up to President Clinton and asks him a question directly that I don't think he's ever been asked. He might have done some set up interviews with like a a, a, a friend, like a Tom Bro somebody that's a friend of his in the media that <clears throat> it look like he was addressing things. But he has not been confronted like this. Listen to this, this young local reporter. 
Mr. President, uh, Donald Trump says your past is fair game. I've got to ask you, you keep coming up on the trail with him. Is it fair game? Oh, the Republicans have to decide who they want to nominate. I'm trying to tell uh, now the Democrats yeah. in the country why I think Hillary would be the best president. Okay, so he's not answering the question. But when you have a not. local reporter, you know, I don't think he's ever had a local reporter – Especially a young – he probably went up to her because she's a young girl, and, and she's pretty because she's – you know, she's everybody's right. pretty in their 20s who's on TV. And and first thing she said – she basically what she said was, are you, are you, you know, is your past sexual problems uh, relevant? And he didn't – you know, some of this on the radio today. Bill Clinton – he's going to be asked about this if he's going to run around. What Bill Clinton could say, if I were advising him, what I would tell him to say would be this – Say this, Mr. Clinton. Say, you know what? You know, those things happened in the past. You know, they're between me and my wife, and Hillary and I have moved on from it. And in our marriage, we are together and we are strong. But he can't right. even, you know, the, the issue was such a sensitive issue with him. He can't even pretend that, you know. He can't even, if he would have come out and said, look, I've done things in my past I'm not proud of. Some of the things are true, some of the things are not true. I don't want to get into that. I want to move forward. But I will say that I do respect women, and I regret if I've done anything disrespectful to them. Yeah. I'm not like that anymore. Anything like I apologize if I've offended any – I mean, it obviously wouldn't mean much. Yeah. But and Hillary's the, the Clinton, and Hillary is, you know, Hillary's yeah. accepted The Clintons are big on avoiding done. questions. They both avoid questions they don't like, and that's going to well, catch my, up to them. My favorite clip of the week was um, this woman – who went to a town hall. Yes. Let me pull this clip up. I mean, okay. Okay, Hillary is at a uh, a town hall in New Hampshire. And I got to explain this because I, I don't think most people know. If you listen to me on the radio, listen to the podcast, you've heard this a bunch of times. But I, I got to say, when when Hillary Clinton or any Democrat have a town hall meeting, it is not a ra- random town hall meeting. It is a play you are watching. The people called upon have been screened. They may, they sometimes you find out when people call on Democrats they work for them sometimes they're campaign workers it comes out all the time and town hall meetings are just plays they are not real spontaneous events where real people are asking questions it's the questions from the campaign and there's a woman in New Hampshire who wanted to ask uh, Hillary Clinton a question and I'll, I'll play this listen this uh, this is I've not seen this on television yet and this is the big story. It's only Tuesday, but this is the big story of the new year. So Hillary's at this town hall in New Hampshire. This woman tries to ask her a question. I'm not going to take your question because other people have been right. Yes, go right there. Okay, let me see. They're right back there, this man right there. In the, the, here we go, right there. You are very rude, and I'm not going to ever call on you. Thank you. Okay, now I get to the rest of this. You're very rude. You're, I'm never going to call on you. You know, yeah, you, I didn't take you. You're ruder than Chris Stevens when he was trying to call me, you know, and I wouldn't, you know, and he was trying to interrupt my life, Chris Stevens, when he was begging for his. You know, Hillary Clinton, what the woman had, had sh- shouted out was a question about uh, uh, Juanita Broderick, who was a guest on this podcast. <laughs> and let me tell you, That's hilarious. Let me, let me tell you I something. love to see Hillary um, fall apart. It's awesome. Yeah. I, I've gotten to it's know awesome. Winita Broderick a little bit, and you know I've talked to Winita Broderick not just on the show here, but um, months and months ago I befriended her on Facebook, and I talked to her a little bit, and uh, then I I asked her after I talked to her for a while if she if I could interview her, and she says I really don't want to relive that, and, you know. And then one night Kathy and I were walking the dogs, and I got a ding on my phone that means I got a Facebook message. And I looked down, and and it was Juanita, uh, Juanita Broderick, and she had sent me a message one night, and she said, Brian, it, it, I think it's time that I talk, because people need to know and hear this again. How and old is said, Juanita Broderick? I, I don't know how old she is, but I'll tell you this about Juanita Broderick. She is a nice, nice lady. She is like your, uh, she is like Aunt B on on from Mayberry. So anyway, so this woman, she's asking about Juanita Broderick, and I'll give you a little bit of background on her, and then I'll play the rest. She is a sitting state senator in New Hampshire, 
Okay, that means thousands and thousands and thousands of people have uh, know her, know her story, and have elected her to the state senate in New Hampshire. And New Hampshire, of course, is one of those early primary states. And uh, the, the the media, they tell us that what the opinion of everyone in New Hampshire is like better than everybody's opinion because it's like the it's like I win the New Hampshire. And uh, I, I have seen them find one person who doesn't like Trump in New Hampshire, and then the, the whole prediction of the show, well, New Hampshire doesn't look good for Trump. We found this one guy that doesn't like him. So here you have a, a state senator with the support of thousands of voters behind her asking about what need to and And Hillary screams at her like the Wicked Witch of the West and the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Yeah, round! So, so listen to this. So a reporter, this, this very homosexual-sounding reporter – after the fake town hall goes up to this woman and attempts to discredit her for challenging Hillary. And some things come out when the reporter is trying to discredit her, and uh, it doesn't go good for the reporter because he ends up giving her credibility. And uh, this is why you haven't seen this woman on television this week because it would it hurt Hillary and help Trump listen. Let me go. Let me go back to the yelling the hag part first. Right there, and that, that, here we go. Right there. You are very rude, and I'm not going to ever call on you. Thank you. I'm not going to call on you. I'm not going to take Chris Stevens' call. I'm not going to call on you. You think you're Lady Gaga? You can't talk to me. How in the world she, she, can, how in the world she can say that one of your brothers is half a million lying when she has no idea who one of your brothers is because she told me this summer that she doesn't know who she is and she doesn't want to know who she is. And how can she assess that they're lying to what she told someone last month? And she says, she says, she says, that, she says that, that rape victims should be believed. I agree with her. That's true. They should be believed and should assess what they're saying. Why does this issue matter to you? Because I'm a racist advisor myself. Boom! Oh, so so the the reporter knows she's a Republican, so he's going out there to try to discredit her, but he doesn't know what everything about her. Why why does this issue bother you? Well, because I'm a rape victim. Uh oh, that's not what the reporter wanted to hear. It gets worse. No, it's not. Uh, Kathy, you're on the air. Okay, you there, Kath? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Now listen. I, to this. I listen. agreed with you. I said no. It's not what he wants to hear. Oh no, he wasn't expecting that, was he? He got no. surprised to our I was agreeing with you. Sounding reporter. Oh, okay. Okay. Now here's the rest. Listen. <laughs> Why does this issue matter to you? Because I'm a racist advisor myself. I have constituents who tell me that they're drug addicts because they sexually assaulted me. How would I not care about that? You're a Republican, though. She just said she's a rape victim. She's crying. Wow. And he says, yeah, yeah. Well, you're a Republican, aren't you? Which, which me, which totally invalidates that she's a rape victim. You know what I mean? Well, you're exactly. a Republican. It's okay, it's okay to rape Republicans because Republican women, you know, should be raped because you know they hate women so much. Listen to what she says, though. Yeah. How would I not care about that? You're a Republican, though. Coming, coming here to you know coming here to question her, though. Coming here to question her in an event, putting her on the spot like that makes her look, you know, not in a, not in a perfect light. Is that your goal? Would your goal to make her look silly? I was a Democrat. I became a Republican because of this. What? Because of this stuff. Because of what I saw happen. There was something in the Clinton years. So this is the hypocrisy of so-called women that fight for women. The highest hypocrisy. Now, you know, reporters, these reporters tell themselves and their friends they want to be the next Woodward and Bernstein, but they really don't. You know, this guy's got several incredibly breaking national news stories for the election, right? A woman heckles Hillary. Hillary Clinton screams at her. Two, she's a rape victim. Hillary screamed at a rape victim. She's a sitting elected official in the early primary state of New Hampshire, and she used to be a Democrat but became a Republican because of Bill Clinton's sexual crimes. I mean, this is a great story, but this guy, all he wants to do is discredit her and slander her and not let you her be. You should try to That's get amazing. that woman on the show and interview her yourself. Absolutely. She can tell her I'd story I'd love to here. talk to her. 
I was just going to the phones. There were people on hold, but I, I know I kept you on hold there for a while, but I wanted to finish that audio bite. All right, we're going to take a break. We, if you want to call back, please do. We will take your calls. We'll take a break and be back. You are listening to the Brian Craig Show podcast. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. You can follow us on Twitter at at Brian Craig Show, at Brian Craig Show on Twitter, and Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Brian Craig Show. And we are live video streaming on Periscope, which you can download Periscope and watch us at Brian Craig Show. And visit our website, briancraigshow.com. All right, we're going to take a break and be right back. This is Brian Craig. If you're like me, you are tired of the government being involved in every aspect of your life. Who was the government to tell you you have to buy health insurance? And when you do, that you have to buy the health insurance they tell you to buy. I didn't like that. As an American, I don't want the government telling me what to do or what I have to buy. But I thought I had no choice. The Affordable Care Act is the law after all. I learned I do have a choice when I visited StopObamacareTaxNow.com. At StopObamacareTaxNow.com, I learned I don't have to pay hundreds of dollars a month in health insurance premiums for a policy with deductibles in the tens of thousands of dollars. Do what I did and go right now to StopObamacareTaxNow.com and learn how to say no to Obamacare without being fined by the government. StopObamacareTaxNow.com. Are you interested in real estate? Maybe you're a flipper, an agent, or buyer. Whatever your interest, you have to check out the YouTube channel, I Love Real Estate Stories. Andy McFarlane, he's the host. Andy is a full-time wholesaler, flipper, and landlord out of Salt Lake City. His brother, Jason McFarland, is a real estate investor and documentary filmmaker. The two of them have put together this awesome YouTube channel for anyone looking to make money in real estate. Their goal is to provide inspiration and education to those interested in real estate. In fact, everyone, even if you're not involved in real estate, will love I Love Real Estate Stories on YouTube. It is incredibly entertaining. Andy, he's a real estate pro who will give you lots of great information. When you watch I Love Real Estate Stories, you will learn how to improve your real estate business, how to get more deals, and learn how to do more for your clients, which means more deals and more money for you. Simply visit youtube.com forward slash users forward slash I love re stories youtube.com forward slash user forward slash I love re stories Andy uploads new videos every week so make sure you watch and subscribe youtube.com forward slash user forward slash I love re stories for the I love real estate stories YouTube channel You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. You can follow Brian on Twitter and Facebook and listen to archived shows at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian Craig. Oh, boy. All right, we are back. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Oh, you know, uh, uh, President Trump, Last night, Kathy, went to Massachusetts, which is arguably one of the most um, politically liberal places in America. I know California is liberal and New York is liberal, but Massachusetts is like where liberals are born and created, you know, like the Kennedys, and got John Kerry running around and all these other jerks, you know. And last night, Donald Trump uh, filled another arena. Uh, had a, a crowd which was filled to the rafters. They exceeded maximum capacity at this arena he was in. 7,300 people in this arena. But get this. Th- this was what was crazy. They had to wait to get in because of the Secret Service around President Trump. They had to wait mm-hmm. hours and hours and hours and hours to get in. It was 19 degrees outside with wow. winds of 10 miles per hour blowing. So these people waited with probably a windshield of zero for hours, yep. 7,300 of them. It's amazing. Incredible. It is. It is. And, you know, Hillary Clinton had had um, a rally yesterday, too, in Iowa, and 600 showed up. I cannot wait until Trump yeah. wins the nomination, and it's her against him. It is going to be a thing oh, of beauty. He is going to just absolutely humiliate her. Which is what she oh, deserves. Yeah. She, you know, the chickens have come home to roost for the Clintons. And I think 
they are going to be very sorry that she is still in politics because I think he is going to bring up all their dirty laundry and then some, maybe things we don't even know that he's going to come out and yeah. say. I think it's going to be a bloodbath because he does not hold back. And believe me, she has been thinking all along, well, he gets the nomination, I can beat him. But I bet she is starting to rethink that and say, wow, if he gets the well, nomination, think... he's going to he's gonna bring up crap. I don't want to bring it up because no other candidate would do it. Nobody else is going to talk yeah. about it, but he will. Um, You want to take some calls? <laughs> Sure. Okay. Uh, let's take this call, which is on two lines, so I'm suspect of it. We'll, we'll give it a go. Hello, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yes. Okay. That's okay. Let's try one more. Try them again. Hello, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, yes. Here we go. There it goes. There's, there's That's the left. Oh, here we go. This is Cully. Cully, you're on the line. Cully, uh, oh, yes, you're in South yeah. Florida. Oh, actually, What's up, Colin? Yes, uh, not far away from you. That's right. No, actually, What's up? The, that Bill Clinton thing was really funny. Looking at those girls, like half asleep. You gotta love it. Oh yeah. I mean, oh, I know. Just, like, you know that takes a lot so, of guts. They're so bored. It's like you know. And you got the Hillary with the the little heckler out there who was a rape victim. You gotta love that too. Yeah. But see, the media didn't really show that much of it. Of course not. Of course not, because you know, Careless. because Careless. Me, because it doesn't fit the narrative. You know, you got a, you've got Hillary. Could you imagine what would have happened if if Donald Trump had a heckler who was a rape victim? Oh, I'm sorry. What did a uh, a victim of unwanted sexual contact? And okay, we have, shouted we have to re- re- reword it. We have to reword it. You know, unwanted sexual contact. You know, un- un- unwanted cigar contact. Uh, Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, when I remember there was a there was a story going around when Bill Clinton was president, he never released his medical records. You know, Donald <laughs> Trump released his medical records with a letter from his doctor, and when Bill Bill Clinton never released his medical records when he was president, and people always suspected he had a sexually transmitted disease, and there was a joke we used to talk about at the time that he had Peroni's disease. And Peroni's disease is is when the penis bends to one side instead of being straight. And of course, I heard Bill that. Clinton's I heard that. penis. I heard that. Yeah, Bill Clinton's penis was rumored to bend to the left because he he's a lefty. Yeah, of course he's a lefty. He's a, lefty. a Democrat. Yeah, I mean he was. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh yeah, thirteen hours is coming. Someone uh, in the chat mentioned thirteen hours of Benghazi movies coming out. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's going to be great for Hillary. You talk about great timing, it's going to be really good because what Hillary is doing, yeah. I mean, she, she, everything she does is preempted. Everything, everybody she calls on, even when that one rape victim wanted to make a, a question, she kept pointing at this one person. Yeah. Everything is so staged with her that uh, Hillary is going to get hammered by Trump and got to know for a fact, and, and the media knows that too. This is why he, I heard like Carl Rove today. Well, think about it, Cully. He right now. Oh, you're coming in really Trump, good, Kathy. Yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> you came in. No, your your volume came in great. Okay. Oh, good. My oh, voice great. is horrible though. Um, oh, you think good. about it. Trump's energy is all focused on attacking different people, like maybe five or six yeah. right now. When he wins the nomination and when she wins the nomination, it's all about her. She is the only one he is going to come after, and he's going to come after. It's going to be every week. There's going to be something he's going to say. He's going to tweet. It is going to completely drive the news cycle, and by the time it's time for the election, I think I think he's just going to annihilate her. I mean, unless she successfully turns it around and makes it out like she's this poor female victim. If he's smart about it, he is going to just humiliate her, and he is going to bring up all of her past, everything she's ever done. And if anybody ever was on the fence about her, they're going to be like, you know what, I am so sick of this woman and her husband. This is ridiculous. I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun to see because I'm really tired of the Clintons getting away with their crap, and I think they need to be held accountable for their behavior over the last 20 years, and I think this is might be the time when it's going to happen. It'll be fun, that's for sure. 
For one thing you know about them, there's so much to know about them, but these people are so young and stupid that they don't understand what they did. Yeah. How they, well, they're going to. He'll make them understand. There's one thing about Trump. You know, like I say, you know, I agree with what you said. One-on-one, he's going to eat her up like a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. He's, gonna he's not going to hold back. He's not going to no, hold he's, back. He's not going to be like the, you know, all the one guy just, I think it was one yeah, of the well, I, you know, Blasio. You know, great question. Blasio, like, you like, know, one, one, yeah, one, one thing Trump, I would love to hear Trump say is, why is it that Ben Affleck and Lady Gaga have your cell phone number, but Chris Stevens didn't? You know? Well, right I mean, now she can ignore him, but if he gets the nomination and it's one-on-one, she cannot ignore him. She is going to have to address every single thing he brings oh, yes. up. She's going to have I mean, to. Hey, Cully, did you see? Hey, Cully, did you see Obama's fake crying during his uh, gun Oh grab yeah, was that special? Day? Yeah. I, I loved mean, it. my God, I miss he that had, one. He had, like, on, he had to have like life onion juice there. To like, <laughs> yeah. wipe his tears and his eyes to make the tears come out. It's like, oh my god. Yeah, he gosh. doesn't care about anybody. I could not. I, you know, I, 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 I tried to watch it. I went like five minutes and I go, that's it. I'm done. I'll just watch the clips. Because you know, I just can't if, handle, I can't if, handle um, the guy. If, if Black Lives Matter, if they really cared about saving black lives, wouldn't they become pro life and, and try to stop all the black babies from being aborted? Every, I mean, more, ba- yeah, more blacks. Would. Think about it. More blacks are lynched in the womb each and every day through abortion than will be killed in the next several years by cops and gun violence. I mean, that's a fact. And, you know, Obama, right. with his executive orders on gun control, taking guns away from law abiding citizens isn't saving really lives. He doesn't do anything. If Obama said, I'm going to rid uh, criminals of guns and started doing things that would take guns out of the hands of criminals, uh, conservatives would support that, but nothing they do ever takes guns away from these gangbangers in Chicago. No, they Baltimore. take it away from law-abiding citizens. No, yeah, you get all these, ridiculous. You get all these cities like Detroit, you get uh, Philadelphia, yeah. um, and they're like killing each other left and right, and they got the strongest gun laws. And whatever yeah, Obama's we're right. doing right now is not going to work. But see, right now, you know the Democrats, they're basically the Socialist Communist Party. And yeah. their, their goal is to remove guns from the citizens. And yeah. that's yep. like the, what you call the last straw for Obama in this last year is the goal, you know, with Saul Alinsky and uh, the Karl Marx stuff, yeah. is to, get, to remove the guns from the citizens. Well, the good thing you is know, Trump can you know, reverse you everything he does. You know, you talk about Saul Alinsky. And I, I, I had never heard of Saul Alinsky before Obama. In a way, I mean, I'm sorry, maybe everybody else did. I don't know. Did you, Cully? Yeah, I've heard of him. I no, never heard of him. No, I did. Before? I never heard of him before. Well, actually, but, you know, uh, Hillary, I... Hillary Clinton wrote a, a, se- a thesis on him, on him. Yeah. Well, you know, that, you know, what surprised me so much about Saul Alinsky was this, is, is when Denise D'Souza had his second movie, America, out, and I did not realize – that when she was in high school and in college, that she was close and personal friends with Saul Alinsky, Hillary Clinton, and Saul right. Alinsky wanted her to come and work for her when she got out of college. And I, you know, you know, Hillary Clinton's also from Chicago. Her family's from Chicago, not Arkansas. That's where Bill's from. She moved to Arkansas for Bill. And you know, Hil- there is this cell. There's this radical cell that Obama, Bill Ayers, Valerie Jarrett, Hillary Clinton. And right. Are a part of, and it's well, really crazy. With the, uh, yeah. the Attorney General, um, well, if I forget her name. Which one, uh, Rebecca Lynch or uh, Lynch? Yeah, she's also. Lynch? Lynch? Yeah, she's also. It's not from Rebecca Chicago, Lynch. Thing. Rebecca Lynch was the POW that was rescued in Iraq. What's What's Lynch's first? I forgot her name. The Attorney General. What kind yeah. of name is Lynch? Is Lynch for a black woman? Uh, did she change her name to represent the lynchings in the South? I, I don't know. It seems like an odd name for uh, a black woman to have. Loretta Lynch, yeah. I mean, that's just an odd name for a black person to have. Lynch? It doesn't seem that. Wouldn't you change? Anyway, listen, we got to take a break. Cully, thanks for calling. Hey, nice talking. Love, love your Hi, show. Cully. Keep it up. Can't Great. Help you. All right. You guys all, you both are feeling good. Talk to you later. Bye. Thank you. Good, good, good. All right. Good, good. 
All right, that was Cully. Okay, we're going to take a break. We'll be back. There's more to share. You're listening to the Brian Craig Show podcast. My name is Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be right back. Do you need a restful night's sleep? I do, and I have found the perfect way to get that restful night's sleep that I need each and every night with the new app from Nighty Night Labs called Deep Sleep Soundscapes. The Deep Sleep Soundscapes app is designed for those of us who need help getting to sleep. Deep Sleep Soundscapes features binaural beats that will help your mind drift gently off to sleep and help you stay asleep. The sounds include Celtic Forest Lullaby, Angel's Lullaby, Brahms Lullaby, Gentle Ocean Waves, Healing Rain, Restful Ocean Sounds, Rain for Slumber, and many more. Find the Deep Sleep Soundscapes app on iTunes, Amazon, and the Google Play Store. Download the Deep Sleep Soundscapes app today and get a restful night's sleep tonight. Buying a greeting card from the local store really isn't that special. You want to send a card that's personal and shows how much you really care. I want to tell you about Creative Cards by Quokka. Creative Cards by Quokka carry handcrafted unique greeting cards that will make any occasion extra special. Whether it's a birthday, a Christmas card, congratulations, or just telling someone to get well soon. Creative Cards by Quokka will get your message across with a personal touch. They will even make a custom card just for you. Find their website by going to Google and searching for Creative Cards by Quokka. Q-U-O-K-K-A. Take a look at their great selection of beautiful handmade cards. You will be impressed. For your next greeting card, give one of the unique handmade cards from Creative Cards by Quokka. Just Google Creative Cards by Quokka. Q-U-O-K-K-A. Do you want a professional logo designed for your business or website? Then check out Fiverr.com forward slash M-A-T-A-N-E-L-H-A-R-U-S-H. There you will find a professional logo designer who will design and create a top quality logo for your company, website, YouTube channel, your product, or anything you need a logo for. And it will be a professional logo that will set you apart from the rest. Go right now to Fiverr.com forward slash M-A-T-A-N-E-L-H-A-R-U-S-H. N-E-L-H-A-R-U-S-H, Fiverr.com, forward slash M-A-T-A-N-E-L-H-A-R-U-S-H. When you go there, take a look at the examples of their work. You will be impressed. Fiverr.com, forward slash M-A-T-A-N-E-L-H-A-R-U-S-H. You are listening to the Brian Craig Show podcast. You can follow Brian on Twitter and Facebook and listen to archived shows at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian Craig. Brian, we are back. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Oh, and I'm about out of voice. Oh, my gosh. This has been, you know, I I tell you, I um, being sick, it's actually a a great weight loss thing. I've lost about 10 pounds, which is crazy. And uh, I've caught up on TV. You know, I... um, since I've been sleeping on the couch and I was sick all New Year's, and I, I, I um, watched every episode on demand of this new show Limitless, and I, you know, I, I see the commercials constantly for Limitless, and I never watched them because I really didn't care for the Bradley Cooper movie, but I, this show I, I watched every episode. There's there's thirteen of them, twelve or thirteen. They are really good. I got to tell you, they are really really good. So you got to check out Limitless. And then I after I, I kind of ran out of things to watch on demand. So then I started watching uh, the first season of Star Trek The Next Generation, and it's not bad. Once you get to, like, the third episode, and my, my recollection was the first season of Star Trek The Next Generation was awful, and I'm really into it. Every night I'm watching Star Trek now. It's crazy. Back to my roots, you know. It's amazing. I used to, when um, – you with me, Kath? I guess not. She put the phone down. I guess I'm talking about Star Trek. But I used to um, – uh, videotape Star Trek The Next Generation when it was on television, and I could get two episodes on a tape, you know, and because each episode's 43 minutes, I could get two on a two-hour tape, but I'd have to do it live, and what I would do is is uh, I'd pause the VCR when the commercials came on, and I was really good at it. I got to the point where I could pause and then unpause when the, it came out of commercial, and it would be a perfect fade, and I, I mean, I spent so much freaking time Doing that, and I had one of these VCRs. I it had a great picture. It was a uh, some of you might have had it. It was a it had four or five heads on it. So it was 
supposed to be the best picture, you know. You know. And then I I used to buy then I bought bootleg the entire series on DVD. I bought it on uh eBay, the Chinese version of Star Trek the Next Generation on DVD, every episode, all seven seasons, never watched them once, sit in the closet for years. And then I I used to buy all the original series on DVD. There were two episodes. I mean, I spent so much money on DVDs and so much. And now with Netflix, I got every episode of Star Trek, every movie. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, if I, yeah. I mean, as a kid, I never dreamed. Well, for nine bucks a month, not really free, nine bucks a month. Yeah, nine bucks a month. And I got to tell you, we also have Hulu. I've been trying to get Kathy to cancel Kale because we got Hulu, got Netflix, that's all I need. On, On Hulu... Uh, we paid an extra two dollars a month or three dollars a month, and it's commercial free, which is really worth it. So, but um, you know, I got to it's it's you know I go back to these old episodes of Star Trek, and I have a whole new appreciation of them because I watch them from the perspective of an adult, you know, and it, it and they're they're really the first the pilot of Star Trek: The Next Generation, and the first two regular episodes are not good, but a- after you get past that, they're really good. I'm I'm like. I'm like all into it, but you know the thing is, not so much with the original Star Trek, but on Star Trek: The Next Generation, they had a lot of aliens like Worf, and the special effects makeup and and the sets themselves were not built to hold up under high definition television because it didn't exist then. And you can tell that like the Enterprise is made of plywood, and when right. they have aliens. Even sometimes Michael Dorn wore when they have aliens with the head pieces on their foreheads, you can see the putty and the glue. You right. know? And and data, this is crazy because none of this was made for high depth, so they didn't have to be perfect. So data, uh, you can actually see that he's got makeup on because a lot of times he doesn't have makeup on everywhere, around his eyes, on his hands, is like his white skin. But you never noticed it before. Because you didn't have high definition television, and on high definition television, none of these things hold up. It's it's really weird, actually, sometimes to watch it. I'm like, I can't believe because back then, without high definition, you never noticed it, you know. And the 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 makeup putty, you know, it's 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 uh, it's kind of funny to watch, you know what I mean? It's 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 yeah. high definition television. But that that next level up from high def, I went to, you and I went to Best Buy a few weeks back. And our television is like it might as well have rabbit ears on it from the from the sixties compared to these new TVs oh, that are out. I know they're but, amazing, but these new TVs, the picture's too good. It's just too good. I mean, it's 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 pretty good. It. Like I, I, yeah, I was I saw they had um, the Avengers on, and uh, Kelly's mad. We're you know we're ending Kelly. Don't worry, Kelly's mad. We're talking about things not politics. No, whatever. <laughs> but uh, I, I think Kelly's obsessed. Avengers. I, I, uh, I I'm i watching the Avengers at Best Buy, and I can, like, see the razor burns on Camp America. The pictures are too good. I must say they're too good. But um, I, I wanted to play this one clip of George Lucas, okay? I, I, I'm I not going to play the one I played on the last show when he was, you know, attacking, you know. The, the, he's really upset at Disney for having a Star Wars movie that people like. But this is in the same interview with Charlie Rose, and he's talking about... Uh, how great it was during the days of the Soviet Union for filmmakers. Listen to this, George Lucas. Well, one of the reasons I retired is so I could make movies that aren't popular. Because in the world we live in, in the system we've created for ourselves in terms of it's a, a big industry, you cannot lose money. So the point is that you have to, you're forced to make a particular kind of movie. And I used to say this all the time when people, uh, you know, back when uh, Russia was the, the Union of Soviet Social Republics, and they'd say, oh, but aren't you so glad that you're in America? I said, well, I know a lot of Russian filmmakers. They have a lot more freedom than I have. All they have to do is be careful about criticizing the government. Otherwise, they can do anything and they so want. so what do you have? I mean, that's crazy. Oh, wait, he didn't finish listening. So what do you have, Charlie Rose says? To do. You have to adhere to a very narrow line of commercialism. Okay. So I love this guy who just sold his company for four point five billion dollars, give this interview and pretend to be so disgusted by capitalism. But he's I not, know, he it's sold hilarious. His, he was you know, when he sold uh his company for four point five billion dollars to Disney, he was already a billionaire. He was with one billion or 
one between one and two billion. So then he added four and a half billion to his billionaire fortune already. He needed more. And then he gives it's his, not enough. Yeah. And then he sits around with Charlie Rose and pretends to be disgusted by capitalism and commercialism. Brian, this is the hypocrisy of the left. Me? You're seeing it right here yeah. in front of your face with Absolutely. George Lucas. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, th- this guy, this guy, he, he pretends to be disgusted by commercial. You have to be commercial. Well, what's all this merchandising rights that he made all his money on about was commercialism. You know, liberals... I don't – liberals don't see themselves at all. They they really don't understand what they are. And so far as Lucas said, you have to make money. He He's worth five to six billion dollars. He could make um, – he could make as many movies as he wants to make for the rest of his life and finance them, them himself and just watch them in his living room with his Obama-loving wife. He doesn't have to make a dollar on it. What a hypocrite. On that – I'm going to say goodbye. Kathy's going to say goodbye. You've been listening to the Brian Craig Show podcast. My name is Brian. Always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Follow us on Twitter and Periscope at Brian Craig Show. And on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Brian Craig Show. Visit our website, briancraigshow.com. And all the places that carry this podcast are listed there. You can listen to all of our past episodes on the TuneIn Radio app, Stitcher Radio, and, of course, iTunes. When you go to those apps, just search for The Brian Craig Show. All right, we'll be back later this week with another show. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Geico presents Sharing versus Oversharing. Earlier this week, Claire Tippins shared a princess nickname generator, three pictures of her dog wearing a tutu, and two online quizzes, including what candy is your dream castle made of? Claire, your sharing has tipped the sugar scale and turned into oversharing. But have no fear, princess. Geico has something worth sharing with your internet kingdom, like how you could save hundreds on your car insurance just by visiting geico.com. No magic wand required. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance.